Piers Morgan Uncensored, it wasn't so long ago that when teachers ask children what they want to be, they meant what profession. Now they're asking them which animal, object or beast they may identify as and tailoring their lessons accordingly. This isn't satire, it's a genuine story. It's true. It's going on in schools up and down the country. And for those of us who have warned for years about the inevitable consequence of limitless self-identity, it sadly won't come as a surprise. But it is shocking. This story begins with a video that circulated yesterday of a teacher in England scolding two pupils for refusing to accept that one of their classmates identified as a cat. And they're like genuinely on that. And they're going, yeah, that was crazy. You were questioning their identity. I wasn't the question. I was just saying about the gender. I didn't say anything about them. And what did you get this idea from there's only two genders? Gender is not linked to do with the not linked to the class that you were born with. Gender is about how you identify. There is actually very large possessions, because she can be born intersex, she can be born with male and female body parts or hormone. In terms of gender, there are lots of genders. If you have a child you're a girl, you're going to be a Yeah! But you identify with the gender, that, with the sexual organs that you're born with, yeah. or you're weird, that's yeah. basically what you're saying. Yeah. Which is really despicable. Despicable. So at the age of 13, those students who were wise enough to express honestly held opinion, which is one most people in the world would share. Well, for that, their own teacher says they're despicable. And if they hold that view, they should go to a different school. That view being that girls have vaginas and boys have penises. That's so despicable, they would have to leave the school. I think what's despicable in that exchange is what that teacher said. The Daily Telegraph today followed up were interviewing pupils of schools across the United Kingdom for a major investigation. It read like a farce, like they made it up, but it was actually true. They came up with all sorts of examples from all over the country that looked like we were living on, frankly, a different planet to the one that most of us think we're living on. Which makes sense because some of the kids they write about are identifying as alien life forms literally on a different planet. They say that children in high schools are being allowed to self-identity as cats, horses, dinosaurs, even a moon. Not the moon, a moon. And they're deadly serious about this. Often this causes disruption in lessons, the Telegraph reported, because in some cases they'll only communicate in animal noises. Pupils at schools where children identify as cats complain to the newspaper that classes are dominated by the children because they insist on meowing. This is not a joke. This is serious. One pupil at a state secondary school in Wales said a fellow pupil feels very discriminated against if you do not refer to them as cat self. Telegraph discovered that a pupil at one high school is insisting on being addressed as a dinosaur, another as a horse. One wears a cape and wants to be acknowledged, like I said, as a moon. The children are allowed to wear items like cat's ears, while other human identifying children are rebuked for untucked shirts. Well, enough is enough. Put it this way. What would you feel if I said I'm a cat? Seriously, I do actually feel quite feline. I took in two kittens in January, the first pets I've had since I was a teenager. Uh, Two little Burmese kittens called Dennis and Bobby for Arsenal fans, named after Burkamp and Pires. And I frankly now feel like one of them. I feel like I identify as a cat. I snack a lot, I enjoy regular naps, I have higher than average intelligence. I'm curious and inquisitive. I have a natural-born predatory instinct when it comes to attacking rivals who attack me. And everywhere I go, people want to stroke my chin and call me cute. So, so yes, I'm a cat. But there's one problem. I'm a human, really. I'm not actually a cat. Scientifically and biologically, I'm a human being. Incontrovertibly, it's a fact. Much as I'd like to enjoy the benefits of being a cat, 20 hours, naps, no taxes, meals on demand when I cry, I can't because I'm not a cat. Now, if all of this is shocking to you, it's probably because you haven't been paying attention. Most of these teachers are probably trying to do the right thing, terrified of being reported for bigotry, for failing to indulge the gender whims of children. And the children themselves have grown up in a world where they're literally taught there are hundreds of genders and anybody can identify as anything they want. But they can't. 
when something like this happens, society changes so radically and so fast and becomes so ridiculous that it causes complete chaos. And we surely should be questioning this. It cannot simply be the case that minority groups are right. End of question. And anyone who raises questions about it is automatically a bigot or a transphobe. I'm not bigoted or transphobic. But I do think this is insanity. And the next time a child identifies as a, as a cat at school in this country, they should be told that as a mark of deep respect for their new identity, they will be taken out of the classroom, put in a cage with other actual cats who will mm -hmm. scratch and bite them all day. They'll be given water, whiskers, tuna chunks for lunch, taken for walks on leads at break time, and must use a litter tray for a toilet, one that won't be changed for several days. Trust me. They'll soon be re-identifying as humans by tea time. Well, joining me now is the veteran LGBT activist and human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, political journalist Ava Santina, and by the best-selling author and conservative commentator Douglas Murray. Well, Douglas, you're safely over there in the United States, so let me start with you before the fun starts here. Um, this stuff reads like a joke, but it's really not funny when you get into the weeds of it. This is limitless self-identity gone bonkers yeah it's um the very stupid results of a very stupid idea ideology being rolled out by very stupid people uh basically everything has come unstuck in recent years by the ever expanding alphabet acronym people where the fight for gay rights and minority sexual rights turned into this demand this claim that there was no such thing as biological sex as uh, Peter Tatchell and, and others well know, the argument for gay rights was won by saying, we're just like the rest of you. It was also won by saying, you know, we just want to live and let live. Yet the gender ideologues have done something totally different. They've said, you don't have the right to have your own say in this. We are right and you have to agree with us. They say, we're here, and instead of saying we're here, we're queer, we're there, and, and just get used to it, it's uh, we're here, and as a result, biological reality doesn't exist. Well, clearly, this very, very idiotic ideology is causing havoc. Just today, Piers, there's another uh, uh, tape from a school in Scotland where some poor boy is having to explain to his teacher that there's only two biological sexes and that the gender woo-woo stuff is nonsense. And yet again, it's the student having to educate the teacher because the teacher has been indoctrinated into stupidity due to the gender ideologues. OK, Ava, you're laughing. Why? It's just quite amusing, really. I mean, we're talking about children that are 12 and 13. I mean, when I was at school, I had a girl who identified as a horse, but not in this sort of like problematic way that we're now labelling it. She didn't actually think she was a horse. She was just quite strange and walked around and, you know... But nobody in the horses. school then, no teachers would have tolerated that in the way that this is now having to be tolerated. No teacher would have tolerated bullying of that child. And that's what this teacher in Sussex has done. They've said it's not acceptable for boys in that class to take the mickey out of someone who's obviously clearly just a child and who, they're exploring their imagination. Who says they're a cat? Yes, yes, but Piers... They're 12. And he's and actually I... interfering with the lessons by talking in cat language, including meowing, and if people don't go along with this, refusing to cooperate. Yeah. That is not just having a bit of fun being a cat. That is actually assuming the identity of an animal that this person is not yeah. and then insisting everybody else conform to it. That is madness. That's not what's happening. What's happening is there's a child who's slightly more imaginative than their peers and they are acting out this sort of fallacy and that's fine. But to, um, to make it about trans, or to, you, this is where it gets dangerous, okay? The Telegraph... Oh, it's very damaging to trans no, 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 people. It's, I agree. Right, okay. It's, I agree with that. The reason it's most damaging, the Telegraph have been reporting this, it's up 400% in the last couple of years, them reporting trans issues. I don't understand why they've got this weird obsession with going Let into... Me Let me explain why. Let me explain why. No, it's quite gross. Let me explain why. When you have in women's sport six foot four inch biological males destroying biological females at elite sport level yes. in swimming pools, on race tracks, in other sports, that's when it becomes a full frontal assault on women's rights to fairness and equality. Yeah. And when you include them going into dressing rooms and so on and mixing with biological females, 
then there's a safety issue. When you have, as we had in Scotland, a male rapist identifying at his trial as a woman to get put into a woman's Kids, prison I, and being sent there by the female boss of Scotland at the time, who's now obviously in her own troubles, that is why this is this is happening. Kids are watching all this stuff, and as kids do, they want a piece of the action. Oh, Piers, don't be ridiculous. There is nothing, there's no similarity between a child wanting to be a cat when they're 12 years old and someone competing in the Olympics. Oh, there is. There is Peter, no Peter, person. you and I have had a lot of civilised conversations about all this, right? And I want to continue that. I don't think that the trans community gets helped at all by any of this, right? But I don't think it's the media obsessing. I think what you're seeing is, as the trans community get ever more active and populous, if you like, for want of a better phrase, and their activists get more aggressive, when they go to battle on things like women's sport, they're losing everyone and they're piling mockery onto the trans community. If we can go back to the Telegraph article, yeah. it's quite mischievous. Out of the, I don't know, million or more pupils in our schools, they come up with five examples, five examples out of a million. Now, that's wrong. I, I agree it's wrong. But, as Ava says, the kids are just acting out fantasies. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be Robin Hood. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but but the, the, school, the school should not be tolerating But the schools it. are a not. A teacher should not be saying, if you don't, but if you believe there are, that women have vaginas and men have penises, you have to leave the school. That is complete nonsense. No. Right? In, in this particular case, the Telegraph cited this handful of examples. They were by teachers, individual teachers. Mm. They were not school policy. And at least one case, the school disowned the teacher and the policy and said that it wouldn't happen but again. But what about this case in Rye, in Rye College? Well, yeah, I'm sure there are some examples of excesses. On the basis of, of those exceptions, you can't make a generalised attack upon the school system and suggest that all our kids are being propagandised in this way. Because it's simply well, not when you hear happening. that teacher, I think uh, to bring uh, Douglas back in. When you hear that teacher, there's clear evidence of what we've all yes. been fearing has been going on, which is a teacher caught on tape, literally spewing nonsensical gender ideology propaganda. But one teacher, yes, only one, right, one the teacher, way, one teacher, teacher, tens of thousands. Well, hang on, um, one teacher caught on I tape. Think, right, yeah. there've been many other instances I, of this being reported, but no one's actually had it on tape. It's a bit like I would liken it to the party gate scandal when we finally got a video of the people having what was clearly a party there were lots of rumors about it so now we have a teacher clearly on tape doing this but stuff. it's not official school so policy I'll, if i may Schools across if the I country may. Well, not, she's still to I'm my knowledge this. she is still working at that school douglas if i may uh, first of all uh, ava rather uh, um, unfortunately misspoke earlier when she said that the uh, schoolgirl in question was acting out of fallacy, I think you meant a fantasy. But actually, she is acting Thanks, out of fallacy. Thanks, a so fallacy. Much. But do you know a what fallacy, I find fascinating? Right fallacy. Been, do you know what's fascinating about Douglas? A fallacy which has been propagated. A fallacy which has been propagated by gender ideologues and is doing profound damage to gay people, among others, in our society, as well as women. Like and you let me ever explain cared. very quick. Let me ever explain. Cared very quickly why I can't quite hear you I can hear you muttering something let me quickly explain why a poll that just got published in the United States showed that among the general population support for gay marriage has been starting to decline in the last year why is that it's because the arguments that actually brought about liberal rights for all minorities in the last few decades have started to get turned on their head and turned against people what is the source of that it is the gender ideology movement what is the tripwire for the general public it is children it is people learning that their children are being taught nonsensical things. It is being seen by the wider public, most of whom are heterosexual and don't need to identify as cis or anything else. It is being seen from that vantage point as the LGBTQIA plus movement losing control of itself. And so a backlash is starting. And the backlash is coming because people are lying to children and are using children for medical experiments. There's nothing oh, funny ridiculous. about that. There's nothing that, that should cause levity in that. It should be treated by adults seriously. Okay, no. Ava? 
So, Douglas, it's really important, actually, all of that point that you've just brought up, it's very on brand for you because, you know, you like to stoke fear. You've actually made a career out of it. We are, you know, I'll take you I... back to your book, The Strange Death Ava. of Europe, and you made a big fright, you know, you frightened the entire public about your thoughts on Europe, and we ended mm. up in Brexit. You weren't the sole contributor to that, but you yeah. were a big Can we voice stick on to the, the I will, I will. And then, you know, so now we're quickly. talking about LGBTQ, and so you're creating... Hang on, you spoke, you spoke, uh, I'm speaking. Well, uh, no, I'm speaking, I'll, I'll you spoke. Reply. This is a, I mean, and I'll reply. Hello. Let, I haven't let finished. Let Ava speak, please. Douglas. Now, back on the trans issue, when you're talking about LGBTQ, what you've just done there is basically say that the whole of America, who have historically had a problem with gay marriage, are now turning on it because a couple of children oh. in a classroom in Sussex want to be a cat. No, if you can't no, see the no. ridiculousness in that argument, I can't help you. No. The bigger well, issue is all, there is no such thing Ava as gender is. ideology. We I'm all have gender fun. identities. You identify as a man. And I fully respect you. Well, no, no, hang on. I don't identify no. as a man. I was born a biological yes, male. Yes, yes. That's where this whole that's thing is. You need goes, to let me goes rogue. In. I'll bring you back in, Douglas, is what I'm saying. That's where the whole debate goes rogue. You were born a biological male. You were born a biological female. Douglas, biological male. The, this is just a fact, right? No. Once you start saying there are hundreds of genders and you can identify as anything you want, no. you're going to end up with kids at school going, I'm a horse. And you've got to treat me like a horse. It appears you're confusing two things. No, I'm not. Sex and gender. I'm not. I accept they are being conflated. Biological sex is one thing which I totally accept. And so do 99% of the people in the LGBT plus community. Gender is something different. Gender identity is how you see yourself. And, and do, you believe course, it's, do you believe it's limitless? No, I don't believe it's limitless. What's the limit? Well, there is basically male and female and intersex, but there are people who have different gender identities. No, but how many genders are there? Well, I, 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 there is no fixed number. So what's the limit? I don't see a particular limit. There's no limit. So, uh, so I, when I, you said, there's no, you no, said there is a limit, I, now I, you admit there's no limit. No, sorry. Well, there, there is male and female Is identity. there a limit or not there's to the number of genders? Identity. No, that's, that's sex. But, but on but gender, is there a limit to the number of genders? Well, there are, there are some people who are asexual. That's an identity. No, no. There are, some the, BBC, people, the BBC has yeah. put in education videos. There are 100 plus genders. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with so that. So what is the limit? What's the number? Well, I'm not going to specify a particular number, but it's, right. a ve it's very small. But where, it's do very you draw, small. where do you draw the line? Well, I draw the line based on science and evidence. And we know that there is a thing called intersex, where people are born with a mixture of both that is male, literally what it says both, on, both that's what it says on the thing. That is intersex. Yeah. People are born with, with chromosomes from both, yeah. right? That is a medical condition. Yeah. That's inarguable. Right? We're talking about gender. But well, well, trans identity uh, is also a biological fact. I know, but once I... Rooted, I know. rooted in brain structures and processes, understand it. But once as the people, new science shows. But once you get into 100 genders, people can yeah, we're literally... We're not debating 100 genders. Well, actually, the BBC has taught kids, as is back to Douglas's point yes. about... You know, affecting the brains of impressionable young kids. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the BBC if they're saying okay. 100 plus genders. Okay, Douglas. Uh, very quickly, I, I don't know, Ava, anything about your career. Um, I don't know if you have one. Uh, but you did try to imply that you knew something about mine, and you just showed you know nothing about it, because actually my 2017 bestseller, The Strange Death of Europe, was not about the EU. So you should learn at some point to read more than the title it was of the about book Europe. commenting upon it. Was it was about, and it was about uh, so migration, let me, but let me, but and let it me was. very quickly... And how rude are quickly, you? How rude are you? Very quickly, very you quickly... You've built a career me, out of fear-mongering, uh, and you're now importing you this evangelical even American ideas onto UK you television. Even it's very odd. You have career, have you? You what are you talking career. about? I'm so on the same panel as you, Han, and we're getting the same thing. Do you know thing. what? I'm going to wrap so it up by saying you, you both got wonderful careers, or you wouldn't be on Piers Morgan Uncensored. Uh, well. Before I let you go, Peter, though, I want a quick reaction. Elton John today reacted to the Philip Schofield scandal and said that he believed uh, it was totally homophobic, that if it had been a man having a, a relationship at work with a 20-year-old woman, there would be no scandal. What's your response?